Hi, this is Dr. Kat Vlies from Central New Mexico Community College. In video D on the male reproductive system, we're going to focus on the sex glands. That is the seminal vesicles, the prostate, and the bulbourethral glands. Remember that the, the sex glands produce seminal fluid, which is an important component of the, um, the semen that ultimately is ejaculated. The semen is going to be made up, as a quick review, we did this before, but um, it's made up of sperm cells, the secretions of the sex glands, which we can refer to as the seminal fluid, and then a small amount of testicular fluid made by the so-called Sertoli cells, which we haven't discussed yet. We will. This mixture of semen is somewhat alkaline, which of course is going to help neutralize the acidic vagina. It also has all kinds of substances that help with the protection of the sperm, the nourishment, as well as the, as the activation of the sperm. Now, in addition to these um, somewhat obvious things, we also have clotting factors such that as soon as a man has ejaculated, let's say inside of the vagina, the, uh, the clotting factors cause the semen, and this really should say semen right here, um, it really causes the semen to uh, clot right away, and then soon after that, it liquefies with the help of fibrinolysin. So only about 2 to 5 mils of semen tends to be ejaculated, but notice that it contains millions and millions and millions of sperm cells per milliliter, so multiply that by 2 or 5. The seminal vesicles make most of the seminal fluid, almost two-thirds of it. And it's a yellowish, viscous, alkaline fluid, again, to neutralize the vagina, which typically is acidic. And the yellowish comes from a pigment that actually plays an important role forensically. Um, in the event of a rape case, often the forensic scientists or forensic um, medical personnel involved can actually use a UV light to see if there is perhaps evidence of any semen in, on the site where the rape occurred. Seminal vesicles also produce a seminal fluid that's rich in fructose. We'll let, take a look at the anatomy of sperm cells, but they're primarily a nucleus with a long tail, better referred to as a flagellum, that needs to be moved. And in order to move that, um, lots of mitochondria need to be able to crank out ATP, and that's why fructose is provided or needs to be provided to these um, sperm cells. Let's now take a look at where exactly these seminal vesicles are located. We've already gotten used to looking at the male anatomy at a mid-sagittal view, right? This is a more simplified view, but here's the bladder, here's the the pubic symphysis right here. Here is the prostate. And here um, we see the testis with the epididymis, the vas deferens, the ampulla, and here the ejaculatory duct, and we make it to the urethra. So here we see one of those seminal vesicles. Now let's take a look at a posterior view of the bladder. So we're looking at the back side of the bladder. So here is the bladder. And here is the prostate, the chestnut-shaped prostate. Here we see our vas deferens coming in and then slightly enlarging. Remember, that's what we call the ampulla. And so these structures here, those represent the seminal vesicles. By the way, these are your two um, ureters that are entering the bladder on the back side. Um, kind of follow, uh, forming a J shape so that the, the urine cannot backflow very easily. Just like the seminal vesicles, the prostate is a muscular gland. It sits right here. It's a chestnut-shaped gland sitting inferior to the bladder and just anterior to the rectum, which would be sitting right here leading into the anal canal. This is why by inserting a finger into the anal canal, into the rectum, the, the prostate can easily be felt and, and um, checked for uh, size, checked for shape. 
Notice too that some important ducts run through the prostate, particularly we see the urethra as well as the ejaculatory duct run through the prostate. I'll come back to the importance of that in just a moment. First of all, the prostate produces about more or less a third of the seminal fluid. Uh, it produces a rather milky, slightly acidic secretion that is again rich in nutrients, all kinds of enzymes that activate and help the sperm swim. But it also produces something that you'll hear often in a cl clinical set setting, and that is a prostate-specific antigen, and the abbreviation is PSA. So you'll hear men, particularly when they're in their 50s and beyond, needing to have their PSA levels checked, uh, particularly when it is discovered by means of a, uh, an exam through the anal canal that the prostate is too large, is lumpy, um, or feels um, not normal. So this is where I wanted you to remember the ducts present inside of the prostate because not only does the prostate double in size during puberty, but after the age of 25, the prostate continues to grow. And there comes a point in time that in some men, and in many men actually, the prostate actually begins to press on the urethra, which therefore gives a man... Um, it makes it sometimes harder to urinate. The prostate could also be pushing up against the bladder, making, giving him the urge to urinate, yet he can't easily sometimes because the urethra is, is somewhat squeezed. And ejaculation might also become a problem because this ejaculatory duct might also be uh, squeezed partially shut. These are pretty common things that you will encounter with your male patients. The third set of sex glands are called the bulbo-urethral glands because of where they're located. Near the bulb of the penis and the urethra, their ducts lead into the urethra. There are two of them, one on either side of the bulb. They're often also called the cowper's glands. And their role is to produce a thick, salty, clear mucus secretion that is going to especially lubricate the glans penis before ejaculation. So during, this is during the time of arousal. This mucus, mucus secretion is also slightly alkaline and it'll, it'll can, it can neutralize the, rema the remnants of the urine that are left in the urethra. We often refer to it as the pre-ejaculate because it is formed, it is produced, it is secreted before ejaculation. Now what's interesting is that sometimes after ejaculation some of the sperm cells can remain stuck in that uh, mucus secretion of the bulbo-urethral glands. Therefore, after ejaculation, if a man does get aroused again and does insert his penis into a woman's vagina, he could potentially preg impregnate her without ejaculating due to the fact that there are still sperm cells stuck in that mucus. <laughs>